Beginning from Happy Harbor Comics, showcasing a few homegrown artists. Lorraine? Well, you know, Mike, when you think of comics, you generally think of superhero action kind of figures and characters bigger than life. But the world of comics is way more than that, isn't it, Jay? Absolutely. It's like any other medium. There are all different types of stories you can tell. Uh, in fact, there's a comic book that's won a Pulitzer Prize. It's called Mouse, uh, Art Spiegelman's tale of his father's uh, journey through the Holocaust. Uh, and of course, there's just been so many people have adapted uh, biographies like Malcolm X, Bob Marley. There's been other historical events like the Trojan War, Age of Bronze, um, myths and legends uh, like Stagger Lee, uh, man who killed the man over Stetson Hat, um, and just so many other books. It's a huge, huge medium. Okay, and truly, comic books, if you get my drift. When we come back, comic toys as well another huge spin-off from comic books we'll take you into that world in just a few minutes numbers are starting Twenty-three. Time to get happy once again this morning. Lorraine's at Happy Harbor Comics. Yeah, showing us that they can bring our favorite comic book heroes to life. I think I've lost my sunshine today. I've been purging everything in my house. Yeah. And I've just discovered that I've thrown away all the wrong things. Oh, no! Take a look over here. One of the premier collections in North America of Star Wars and G.I. Joe figures, and Shane is the owner of all of them. So when did you start this collection? I started collecting about 18 years ago in 1990 when they started putting out some uh, comic book related action figures by Toy Biz, and uh, I sort of spawned it from there. I went into Star Wars right after that. And were you collecting with that in mind, or were you simply enjoying your toys? I was actually collecting. There was kind of a transitional oh. phase from when I, like, you know, I played with toys to the point where I was, you know, started actually collecting toys. So how large is your collection? I think this is your backpack little transportable part. Is that right? It's, I mean, it, it's pretty mind-blowing, but in all honesty, it's more of a, a quality over quantity collection. So there's lots of people who have way bigger collections, but there's some, some pretty premier things in mine. What are your prized possessions? Uh, a couple of the pieces that uh, are some of my favorites and, and worth a little bit of money is this little guy here. He's from Brazil, uh, and uh, he's probably one of maybe 30 known in the world. Uh, this guy over here, uh, he's uh, pretty rare. He was only released in Canada and Italy, uh, worth a fair bit of money. And that box tank in behind, there's less than five known in the world of that. So it's, uh, it's a pretty fun piece. So this is your passion. How hard do you have to work to get your hands on some of these pieces? It's borderline a full-time job on top of my full-time job. So I'm always networking with uh, different collectors and, and people all over the world to try to find new pieces to add to my collection. What's your advice to people who are doing things like purging out their attics and garages and basements? Talk to people first, or at the very least with the, with the age of the Internet, look on the Internet. Look things up. Try to find out what the names of what you're trying to throw out. Do a little Google search, see if anything comes up, if it's got collectible value. And then if it, if it does, or if you think it does, then try to find you know, local collectors, uh, go to toy shows, go to toy stores, um, and talk to people and, and just see if anything you have is worth some money. And you share your passion, actually, with the show. I do, yeah. I'm the uh, promoter and organizer of the Edmonton Collectible Toy and Comic Show, which is coming up on April 20th uh, at the Shaw Conference Center. We've got some, uh, there's going to be tons of vendors there selling vintage and modern toys. And uh, we've got some special guests, including Ernie Hudson from Ghostbusters and Bonnie Payas, who was in the new Star Wars Ooh. movies. Have, just a very, very quick question. Have these figurines changed a lot over the years? They have, definitely. Uh, some of the older figures, you know, had fairly basic poses and, uh, and you know, limited paint and limited articulation to the point now where some of the, some of the newer figures, like we see in behind here, have uh, incredible articulation, really detailed paint schemes, and the sculpts blow anything away from the, from the 70s and 80s. Okay, and Andrea and Shay, Shane's advice is don't throw any of this new stuff out either. He says because okay. toys are still collectibles, even really? the new stuff. Yeah. Okay, hmm, going back into know. the garbage bin today. <laughs> <laughs> Unbecoming thought, but it's... <laughs> when we come back, we're going to meet some people who are going to show you how you can create your own comic. Alrighty. We'll see you in a bit then, Lorraine. Thanks. The Edmonton Collectible Toy and Comic Show takes place Sunday, April 20th from 11 till 5 at the Shaw Conference Center. Yes. 8.44. Well, the hijinks we get up. <laughs> yeah, what a Friday. A uh, little bit of snow falling out there. So some yes. flurry activity that Mike's been calling for for the better part of the week finally came true. So good to see. You just keep running that play until we get it right. Happy yeah. Harbor Comics now. That's our destination. We rejoin the rain.
Hi, Lorraine. Do you want to see three completely different styles of work? Very talented, aspiring artists. So let's start with Brian. Brian, you're actually looking for a career in this business. I am looking for a career in this business. I'm rather hoping someone will actually pay me to do this for a living. Okay, so that basically they would tell you what to draw and you would do it for them? That's actually exactly what would happen. Okay, Danny, you actually have something coming out in a couple of weeks. Yep, I uh, got uh, two pages going to be published in a comic book in a couple of weeks here. Look at your style. It looks like cowboy hat kind of wow. You're, you're going back in time. Kind of. <laughs> okay. And Paul, you actually have aspirations to turn this into a career as well. Yeah, I'm in the same boat as Brian. I, I just want to get picked up by a publisher. And, but in the meantime, I'm just looking to self-publish, get mm -hmm. everything, just get it out there. Completely different styles of work as you look at the three different artists. So, Jay, what are you doing here in Happy Harbor to encourage people to continue a career or just create comic books themselves? Well, we do a bunch of different things. Um, a couple times a month we have artist jams. People just drop in, like Brian and Danny and Paul, and they sit and draw improv comic book art making. Uh, in a more structured format, we actually publish a couple of anthology books each year. Um, so that's what these books are? Yeah, we call it Tales from the Harbor. That's what we do right now, and it's a, a free... Uh, submission for anyone who has a finished story. It has to be done, you know, written, penciled, ink. It has to be finished. And we put it into these books, and we generally put out about two books a year. Uh, as well, one of the other bigger problems for artists is finding the time uh, to do things. So we host events like the 12 hour comic challenge and our 24 hour comic day. Uh, <clears throat> it gets people to come in, they draw continuously, uh, you know, churning out uh, creative ideas one after the other. We do them as fundraisers, our 12 hour events in support of Big Brothers Big Sisters and our 24 hour events in support of Alberta Literacy. Uh, and on top of that as well, we also try to do other things in house. We have like a, a little kind of self help book where I've gone and I've talked to a bunch of different people in various stages of their careers people who've done it themselves, people who succeeded into publishing, um, teachers, journalists, all sorts of different people, gotten their input and insights into the medium, to the hobby, how to progress, why you would do it, and we've kind of put it into a book. I've got another book scheduled to come out later this year as well. Who knew, just very, very quickly, how to read a comic book? There's two layers to comics. There's text and there's pictures, and if you don't read them both, you're only going to get half the story. So you really have to take the time to kind of sit and absorb all the material that's there. There you go. Who knew, Andrea and Shay? This is a completely different world, isn't it? It is, actually. Oh, and it's Most an art form. definitely. Yeah. Huge art form. Okay, very, so very good, good luck to all three of you in this world of illustration. Hmm. And in the meantime, have a wonderful weekend. We'll see you on Monday. Okay, thanks, Lorraine. Looks pretty challenging.